Now hold on. Don't click off this video just yet. I know what you're thinking. You got baited into another low effort tier list when uh, you just wanted to click on the video because uh, you wanted to hear about how oh, Sacred Stones is the best game ever and you should play it and you should give it a try and it's super cool. Um, and now you're going to come back here after you scroll to the end and realize that Sacred Stones isn't even at the top and then you're going to complain about how the thumbnail isn't accurate. And I just wanted to say, all right, that I want to talk about Fire Emblem in somewhat of a long form deal. All right. And I find for me, putting things in a tier list format helps me do that. I could talk forever, but if I don't have a structure in front of me, I will go on a tangent about whales or dolphins or like sloths or something and it'll just go on and on forever and uh, I wanted to make this more of a, uh, you know, like more heavily edited sort of video than I usually do anyway. I just try out some some editing skills that I may have accrued over a couple years of doing this now to little success and uh, just just in case you make it to the end of this video and you go wow you know I I, I agree with this guy's takes uh, he's pretty cool um, I want to watch more fire emblem content well I don't have any on the channel yet uh, I might do some in the future, but there's some projects I'm working on now, uh, excluding the Witcher one, uh, don't worry about that one, uh, that I want to finish, and then maybe I'll move on to the next thing. It's just, uh, when you have the train of thought of, like, a squirrel, and, uh, you decide to be a variety channel, um, well, let's just say, uh, things don't get done particularly efficiently. Anyway, uh, let's get to it, shall we? Alright, uh, disclaimer, I suppose, before I start this totally not a tier list, tier list, um, I have not played Fire Emblem 3 or 12, and I don't plan on playing them, and you can't make me, I don't want to, Fire Emblem 3 is bad, and Chris is dumb, uh, so, fight me. Uh, with that out of the way, I'm gonna rate them anyway. And I'll start by rating them, because I have the least to say about them, because I've never played them. But I've seen other people play them, and they suck. Granted, I think the one with the Avatar character is better than the original, because the original first three Fire Emblem games suck. Speaking of the original first three Fire Emblem games, Fire Emblem 1? It started the series, you know, Marth's in that game, wow, Smash Bros, wow, Mar Marth, Marth from Melee? Yo, that's my favorite character, oh my gosh, yo, it's your boy Marth. Um, look, it's strange to me, for one, that everyone sees Marth as Mr. Fire Emblem, you know? He's the Smash Bros, like, character, you know? He's essentially from Smash Bros. Then he's the Fire Emblem guy. Uh, you know, that's what uh, people who don't know anything say anyway. Uh, but that always upsets me, because I'm like, bro, literally in Melee, when Marth joined, you know who else was there? Roy. Roy was in that game too. And everyone forgets, because Roy was bad, and Marth was good. So everyone's just like, oh, hey... Let's talk about Marth. Marth is the Fire Emblem guy. Who's Roy? Roy was there the whole time, okay? Like, y'all are just... Unfair. You're unfair, okay? Mr. Krabs is in there. Anyway, uh, Fire Emblem 1. It's not staying in the B tier, don't get me wrong. Um, Was it innovative for its time? Not even particularly, to be honest. Um, if you've heard of a game called Langrisser, uh, they came out at around the same time. Um, and, you know, there were other games too that were not as successful. Uh, Fire Emblem 1 was okay. You could play it now, if you wanted to. I'm pretty sure they 
sell it on the eShop now, unless that was only a limited time thing. Um, it's really slow. The mechanics are really bad, especially, like, the mechanics for critting. Like, it's so random and just trash. Oh, man, bro. Like, FE1 is so bad. Like, there's not really a story at all. I mean, it's an NES game, right? You have to give it, like... You have to compare it to other NES games, which, in my opinion, pretty much every NES game, aside from, like, I don't know, Mario, like, Mario 2, Mario 3, and, like, Kirby, um, suck. And, look, maybe that's a Zoomer take. Maybe it's like, oh, you couldn't appreciate, couldn't appreciate the sick awesomeness of the NES. But... Oh well. Like, oh well. FE1 isn't good. I'm putting it in D tier. But I'm putting it above uh, FE3 and FE3 the second time. Uh, Gaiden. Gaiden is a garbage fire train wreck that is, like, way different than FE1 for some reason. Like, Gaiden is actually, like, way different than even Fire Emblem Echoes. Like... Gaiden's weird. If you haven't played it, play it. Uh, the Fargas, the Fire Emblem YouTuber, uh, you know, it's like one of his catchphrases. Uh, play Gaiden, bro. And, uh, I agree. You should. You should play it. Just so you know what hell is like. Because Gaiden is terrible. It's really bad. It's so slow. It's so bad. You get, like, four units in the entire game. I mean, yeah, there's, like, Resurrection Shrines just, like, in Echoes. Wow. Except, like, the plot is, like, what? There isn't one? Like, I don't know, man. Like, why is... The ball... I want to call him Balsar because I've been playing freaking Final Fantasy XIV so much. Uh, His name's not Balder. It's... Oh, man. Ba... ba, -ba. You know what? Whatever. It, it just goes to prove my point. This irrelevant side character, for some reason, is on the cover with Almond Celica. Because I, I guess they wanted three guys? I, I don't know. He was fine in the game, too. Don't get me wrong. He was an okay character. I mean, not Gaiden. Gaiden, like, who? And I mean, in Echoes, when people actually were written in the game and, like, existed. Uh, no, Gaiden's freaking bad. But honestly... It's so weird that I'm putting it in C tier. I'm putting Gaiden in C tier because it's weird. So, you know, uh, take that, haters. Um, FE4. I have no idea, like, what the heck happened between the NES and the SNES. But, like, every game on the SNES is a banger. Like, you got freaking... Kirby again, Mario again, Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong 2, Donkey Kong 3, and Genealogy of the Holy War. All of the best SNES games, alright? This game is amazing. FE4 is awesome. And you might think, FE4 is actually kind of bad, and okay, fair enough. You're right, but you're also wrong. And there, here's why you're wrong, okay? There's only one FE4, alright? If every Fire Emblem was like FE4, there wouldn't be any Fire Emblem. But, because only FE4 is FE4, you can go back and play this game, have a unique experience, like Gaiden, right? Except instead of the unique experience of like, I don't know, shooting yourself in the ball sack with a nail gun, you are instead having the unique experience of um, taking three hours to move uh, an army of 30 units through a forest to fight three cavaliers that uh, Sigurd, who is your main lord until, you know, uh, spoilers, he dies. And then you play as his son, who is honestly just as broken, like, except he doesn't start with a horse, I guess. Um... Yeah, uh, so, the game's not hard, um, you could grind a lot with arenas, actually, I would say, 
There's a lot of, like, Fire Emblem purists out there that are, like, grinding in my Fire Emblem. Please. You can't, like... Fire Emblem 8 isn't, like, a real game if you fight enemies. But in FE4, if you arena with every character on every map, you will be cracked beyond belief. You will be rich. You will be, like, busted. Like... It, arena and fe4 and it is right there you don't even have to move you don't even have to f really do anything you just have to fight in the arena it's it's not hard it's not hard at all um and it's great i love it not to mention you get like conversations in your castles and then like there's su supports uh exist in this game kind of for the first time and it's awesome and then your units can get married and then you play as their kids because uh you know there's a time skip and that's awesome and cool and even though you might say well awakening and fates did it they didn't really you can play as both of them at the same time and uh in fates's case it's stupid and dumb and shouldn't have been in the game at all but i digress uh, FE4 is really cool. There's a lot of really cool, fun concepts in it. There's a lot of really cool, fun characters in it. Like, the characters are pretty unique, because they are locked to getting specific skills. And, admittedly, this isn't a good mechanic that should stay in Fire Emblem, but in Fire Emblem 4 it's fun, because it's only in Fire Emblem 4. Like, uh, I assume you have this, this pattern going for you, but, uh... Like, the ability to double is not inherent in this game, right? Like, having speed doesn't mean you can double. You need to have a certain skill to double. Um, and the skill, the characters that have it are just better. And that's just how the game works. But, oh, not to mention Holy Blood. Holy Blood cracks the whole thing open. Basically, you have characters with, like, Donal growth rates. And then you've got characters with, like, a Gunther from, uh, from, a uh, Conquest. No, Gunther from Revelations, alright? And those, those are your two characters in FE4. And, um, it's, it's not a balanced game. Um, the mechanics probably weren't even well thought out, but they're kind of fun and kind of unique. And getting map events and traveling around and, like, doing all these, like, wacky things, I don't know. Like, getting the doubling ring for Arden was awesome. Like, what can I say? I like FE4. I'm putting FE4 in A tier. Boom. Got him. This is a sick game. Play it if you haven't played it. It literally, it still holds up. Like, if you think Chrono Trigger and, like, Secret of Mana still hold up, FE4 holds up. FE5... Um, so they refined the mechanics of FE4 and, uh, made them better and, uh, so anyway, the idea is that you play as Generation 2, you play as Generation 2 before the Generation 2 and FE4, so it's like kind of a mid -quel. that's not a word, but Whatever, it's in between FE4 and FE4. Uh, another Fire Emblem YouTuber, Becca, likes this game. I don't know how. This game is trash. <laughs> this game sucks. What the heck? Um, bro, this thing is so over bloated and like bad mechanics that make no sense. The story's fine. It's not as good as FE4's. I mean, how could it be? It's in the middle of FE4 and FE4. Um, the characters are good, I guess. Leaf is pretty cool. Um, it has some of the things that make FE4 good, but I think overall it takes out the charm that FE4 has. And then you just get old game. And honestly, this game, as much as I'm shitting on it, it's not that bad. Like... I'm, I'm putting it in C tier, but it's better than Gaiden. Okay, Gaiden actually is bad. FE5, I just don't like that much. Uh, 
IMO. FE6. Alright. Here's Roy, speaking of Roy. Uh, this game is sick. Um, the only problem with it is that uh, hit rates on every weapon suck in this game. And um, half of the units in the game are pretty much unusable. Like, you've got Rutger. And Deke. And, like, Milady and Percival. And, uh, there's your whole roster. Um, I guess Shauna's kind of decent, too. But, uh, like, yeah, most of the cast in FE6 suck. They're just, like level one little kids in their base forms that are like oh train me train me but they're all like that and if you've played fe6 hard mode like you don't get that much of your xp and you don't get very many promotional items so you ain't using all those units and even if you did most of them have bad growth rates you'd think a level one unit in a base class is screaming hey level me up have you ever leveled up wendy no well, you shouldn't, because she's terrible. She's awful. Like, it's easy to say, oh, my max level Wendy got RNG blessed by the gods and has capped every stat. Yeah, okay, fine, that can happen. It's Fire Emblem. Like, every character can do that. But on average? Come on. Come on. Even Fear, someone I use every run of this game, sucks most of the time. And that's an issue I have with FE6. But... Story's okay. Gameplay's fun. Um, I like most of the characters. Uh, technically, this game doesn't exist in English, but come on. I mean, look, if you're playing any of these games, you know... You know where you're playing them, okay? Uh, so for that... I like FE6. But I'm keeping it in B tier. It's pretty good. I like it. It's decent. FE7. Um. FE7 is awesome. I like this game. I like Lin mode, okay? I like. Well, okay, I don't really like Lin. I mean, I kind of like Lin because she's hot, but, like, she sucks. She sucks to use. She sucks in the game. Her growths are kind of mediocre. She caps speed, but she has literally four strength so who cares um yeah that, that's enough speaking about lynn uh hector's cool hector's sick an axe lord how often do you get those literally never true hector's awesome um and you know because you get to play as him there's some justice for him getting freaking yeeted in fe6 i guess another spoiler but i like the cast i like the story for the most part the um stuff with the like uh impostas y you know you know like sonya and stuff how they're like puppets or something uh, that like whole subplot which admittedly is like 60 percent of the game um sucks and you might be thinking, well, then that means 60% of the story sucks. Wrong. Wrong. Because all the, like, little moment-to-moment -moment stuff and, like, the character, like, dialogue and all that is very good. And that's most of the game, really. Like, the shitty, like, evil, like, puppets with yellow eyes. Like, they're, they're not most of the game. Um, I like FE7 more than I like FE6. And I actually like FE6 quite a bit. Um... FE7's a bit easier, but I think that's kind of, in some ways, better. Um, also, in my opinion, I think the only reason FE7 is easier than FE6 is because more percentage of the characters in it are actually usable. They're actually, like, kinda good and not, like, oh, you got a level 1 Myrmidon in Chapter 10, congrats, you know? I mean, there's some of that, don't get me wrong, like, Nino... Nino's like a level 1 mage you get at the very end of the game, but, you know, she's fine. She's fine. Like, the chapter right after you get her, 
Like, you can grind her on crappy enemies, and she'll hit, like, level 10, probably. And her growths are so good that she's usable. She's not great, but she's usable. And that's why I like FE7 more than FE6, because, um... You can use the characters you like. In FE6, you kinda... Use Rutger and Deke. And Alan and Lance. You know, that's... Woo. Yeah, that's my whole party, the whole game. And Clarine, I guess. But Clarine doesn't count. She's a staff bot. Uh, anyway. So, uh, FE7? There you go. That's where it goes. I like FE7. It's good. Tempted to put it in A. Actually. I'll keep it in B for now. I'll move it up to A later, depending on how I feel. Um, Sacred Stones. There's no reason for me to scroll down, especially because I've been doing it this way the whole time. Fire Emblem 8. The Sacred Stones. Alright. I was talking about the Sacred Stones earlier. Because, it, uh, more likely than not, I've put it as the thumbnail of my video, unless I forgot, and then that whole joke at the beginning goes over everyone's heads, and then they, uh, are confused and think I'm crazy and click off anyway. This game is great. Kind of. It, um, improves upon FE6 and 7's formula. By quite a bit. It adds... Dual promotions. I want to say since for the first uh, for the first time, it adds dual promotions. But I, I can't help but think that is a lie. I think. You know what? Whatever. It's the internet. People uh, make stuff up all the time. Like, whatever. Um, for some reason I'm remembering there being dual promotions in FE4 or 5, but there's probably not. Whatever. And FE8, there's dual promotions. It's cool. It's fun. They add trainee units as well, which is kind of cool and kind of fun because they add, whoa, grinding, wow, which is, uh, sometimes fun in Fire Emblem. It's fun for me, because, and this is where the part where I say I have a unique perspective on the Fire Emblem games thing comes in. For some odd reason, the way that I play Fire Emblem is I like to min-max characters, make sure, level them to 20, promote them, level them to 20, make sure they have optimal skills, they're in their optimal class, and then do PvP and fight people online. That's what I like to do about Fire Emblem. Oh, also, that was a thing in Fire Emblem 7 as well, but it was bad. Uh, in Fire Emblem 8, it was good. Mostly. Kind of. Uh, this game is sick. The story is, in my opinion, uh, better than FE6 and 7's. Um, I, for some reason, still like FE7, FE7's story more. I, I don't know. I think it's because I just have bad taste. But I think, like, objectively, it's a better story. Like, it's pretty well written. Like, um... Leon and, um... It is so hard to remember the name of every single Fire Emblem character in existence. Like, you'd think I'd be able to do this more easily, because I've seen them, like, a hundred million times. Well, whatever, the Archer guy. And Tana. Uh, like... I love the cast of Sacred Stones. Um, they're all good because you can grind them all. And if you say, well, if you play without grinding, they're not all good. It's just like true, I guess. Uh, then all the trainees but Ross are bad. Um, and like, I don't think you can buy dragon stones in this game either. Just like an, like an FE6, uh, like, Okay, it's not exactly like in FE6, because you get a couple of Dragonstones in FE8, but in FE6, like, uh, once Faye is out, she's, uh, doomed. In FE8, once Mur is out, she gets another one eventually. I don't remember them selling them in shops, but they probably do. 
Well, as I am wont to do, I've lost my train of thought, and I don't even remember where I was. Um, welcome to my life. In any case, like most things, Gaiden did it first. <laughs> um, and branching promotions was in that game, not in FE4 or 5. I knew it was in a game before Sacred Stones, I just didn't remember which one. And now you might question, did you even play the games? I did. I just have... shit memory. Um, unfortunately. And, uh, I'm not even that old. Can't, can't wait for the future. In any case, Sacred Stones is a good game. Um, I like training units. It's fun. I guess, you know, even if you don't, like, the thing is, right, people like to make the argument, like, oh, if you grind in Sacred Stones, it's too easy, like, it defeats the purpose of the game, grinding is bad. But, if you just throw Seth at everything, you win the whole thing anyway. So, <laughs> so, you know, uh, might as well play the way I like to play and just min-max all your units because it's fun. Use, use Great Knight Amelia. Hell yeah. Don't use General Amelia or Paladin Amelia. Great Knight Amelia is where it's at. Thank you for this PSA. Um, Sacred Stones is good. It's fun. Um, it's fun enough to where I think anyone who's honestly, if you play three houses or like three houses was like your first game, or maybe Fates was your first game, or maybe Awakening was your first game, and you're used to some of the quality of life stuff that came with those games, you could go back and play Sacred Stones anytime and enjoy it just the same as any of those games, I think. Like, this game, it's great. I put it in A tier. Honestly, I would rather play through Sacred Stones a second, third, fourth, fifth time than play through Gaiden more than once. Ga Gaiden? What? Uh, Genealogy more than once. And I love Genealogy, but Genealogy is not a game you want to play through more than once or twice. Um, like, play through it one time. If you haven't, play through it once. And then you can be like, alright, I did that, and move on. Path of Radiance. This game I didn't play until a much after, like, much later after it came out. Uh, just because I didn't know it existed. I thought Radiant Dawn was the first game Ike was in, and the only one. Uh, didn't know Path of Radiance existed. But I did eventually play through it. This game is just as easy as Sacred Stones. I'm sorry if anyone just like wants to disagree with me, but it's true. Although, however, uh, like pretty much all the characters are good. Like fundamentally, this game is very solid. Like for a Fire Emblem game, it has like all the things you'd expect out of one. It has a really nice like difficulty curve. I don't know. It's just like it's a game that seems to have been made. With the idea of, like, first-time Fire Emblem fans in the West jumping aboard, like, the franchise, you know? And getting into it. It's it's a good game to, if you've never played a Fire Emblem game, on the other hand. I guess, much like Sacred Stones, sort of. Uh, if you've never played a Fire Emblem game, play Path of Radiance first. It'll do a good job telling you what Fire Emblem is. And then Three Houses will take that all away from you, but we will talk about it when we get to it. Path of Radiance. This game. It's pretty good. It's alright. Story's fine. The roster's alright. The game's... The game's good. I like the Laguz gimmick. Lagoos are fun to use. I like them. Um, a sort of return in Fates and Awakening. Sort of. Uh, not exactly the same, but once again, we'll get to it when we get to it. 
I don't really have a lot to say about Path of Radiance. I gotta be honest. Um, it's not bad. I think I'll actually leave it exactly where it is. I think it. I think it deserves that spot. Radiant Dawn. This game, in my opinion, is just better Path of Radiance. Granted, it's a lot harder than Path of Radiance. Radiant Dawn is hard as crap. Hard mode in Radiant Dawn, in my opinion, is probably the second hardest Fire Emblem experience there is. Behind Lunatic Plus and Awakening, which is just bad. It's just bad game design. And maybe like Hard 5 in uh, Shadow Dragon, maybe. Um, like those being like the top three hardest things in Fire Emblem. Uh, which, in my opinion, is also just bad game design, but not nearly as bad as Lunatic Plus, let me tell you. This game's fun, though. Oh, also, Radiant Dawn was my first ever Fire Emblem game. Um, I didn't know that permadeath was a thing, I didn't even know what Fire Emblem was. I was just like, you know what, I got this game for my Wii for, like, my birthday, and I'm just gonna play it. Yeah, anyway... I got to about, you know that chapter when you recruit, like, Alencia? Well, you don't recruit her, but you play as her, and it's like the sky battle. I got to about there as, like, a 10-year-old. Yeah, this game came out a while ago, and I'm kind of old, I guess. I'm not that old. Needless to say... I got to a point to where the only units left in my entire army were Ike and Mist. And that's it. And I couldn't win. I just, I just couldn't win. Because my whole army was dead. Um. Oops. Uh, eventually, you know, I came back and I, I finished the game, and I think uh, Radiant Dawn's story is awesome. The Dawn Brigade, you know, sucks. Makai is cute, though, so, it, you know, it, it, make, it carries. And Soth is kind of cracked for the first chapter, which is the only time you need him to be cracked, because Dawn Brigade sucks for the rest of the game, and you don't have to worry about them anyway. So, uh, yeah, Radiant Dawn, Pog. It's a Pog game. I like this game a lot. Not an S tier. Sorry. It's not that good. I'll put it in A tier. Uh, I'll honestly put it under Genealogy. But I think it's a great game. Um, unfortunately, it's not a game I can recommend. Even though I like it a lot. This game is like 50 hours long or something like that. This game is like a freaking 80 chapter game. This freaking insanely long game. There's so much, like, content packed in here. Honestly, there's a lot of charm packed in here as well. Like, Radiant Dawn's a great game. But you have to really, really be, like, ready for Fire Emblem if you're playing this. Like, it's funny, almost. Because I would say Path of Radiance is the game that you should play if you've never played Fire Emblem. Radiant Dawn's the game you should play if you've played it. Every Fire Emblem. Uh, anyway, game sick. Uh, you know, you know, moving on. Uh, Shadow Dragon. This game's fine. This game's fine. Look, at the end of the day, uh, to me, Fire Emblem is about more than just gameplay. For me. I like training units. I like fighting other players with my units. You know, like, I like what I like. You know, I like story. I like support conversations. I like making my own characters to an extent. And you would think that I would love Three Houses then. And maybe you're right, but we haven't gotten to it yet. Haha, -ha, you thought you'd get it out of me early, huh? Oh, 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 oh. okay. So anyway, Shadow Dragon. It's alright. Shadow Dragon's fine. It's better than FE1 in all regards. It, like, has a plot, unlike FE1. Um, 
But like, admittedly, some of the funny cut-ins, like awkward translations and stuff from FE1 are kind of lost as well, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, also, Shadow Dragon, and also FE1, I guess, can kind of be broken in half. Uh, Ballisticians are dumb. Also, in Shadow Dragon, you can reclass, uh, so you could just have an entire team of Paladins, which you're gonna do every time. Unless you have an entire team of Wyvern Riders, I guess. Uh, mix things up. Anyway, uh, yeah, uh, it's fine. It's, it's fine. <laughs> Awakening. Do I want to do Awakening right now? Sure. Sure. Alright. Awakening was not the first Fire Emblem game I played. Nor was it the first Fire Emblem game I completed. But it was the first Fire Emblem game I played and made me realize that I like Fire Emblem, you know? Like, when I played Radiant Dawn, I didn't know what I was doing. Like, I didn't know what Fire Emblem was. I didn't know what the community was about, you know? Like, when I played Awakening, I was like, I gotta play the next game. Like, I gotta be a part of this. Because this means something to me now. Anyway, I'm putting this in S tier, obviously. Um, and this is proof that for me, gameplay is not everything in a game. Because uh, Awakening's gameplay, I mean, okay, it's better than FE4 and FE5's gameplay, alright? It's way better than FE1, 2, and 3's gameplay. Everything else can be debated. Uh, to be fair, but it's difficult to explain why I like this game so much. Hold on one second. I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play something. I'm not gonna just play this song and not say anything, because I don't want my video taken down by Nintendo. I actually want people to watch it. But if you wanna know. Why Awakening is my favorite Fire Emblem game. Spoiler, it's my favorite Fire Emblem game. It's because of this. It's because of sound design. Look, as much as I'm jamming, I can't just leave it on like that. Uh, yeah, so sound design. All right, there's a lot to unpack here. I could honestly make a separate three-hour-long video, probably, about how I think sound design is the most important thing in a video game. And some of you might be freaking bashing your heads against the wall going, What? What the hell do you mean? And look, alright, map design is a, is a close second. It's a close second. Then after that, it's like... Menuing, actually. Like... The easier your menus are to navigate, get in, get out of, without interrupting the flow of gameplay, that's probably the third most important thing. Second is obviously, you know, like I said, map design. First, sound design. Sound design is the most important thing in gaming. For me. It's not the same for everyone, maybe. Or maybe I'll convince you that it is the best thing. Just hearing menu noises from awakening you can f like feel it you know you can feel it in your your heart almost it's just so good and like yeah even though the crit quotes are cheesy you know that's where they like came from you know the cut-ins the quotes and like I don't know. I don't know. The OST is phenomenal. The OST is phenomenal. The voice acting is incredible, even though... Even though the voice is technically, like... 
aren't in every uh, aren't in every scene because the game is like kind of partially voice acted but hey your boy Matt Mercer is out there and hey did I talk about multiplayer content and creating characters and holy shit there's so much content in this game okay it's difficult for me to find a place to start with Awakening, okay? I like pretty much every character, except for, like, Muriel and Lorium. His name's not Lorium. His name's Laurent. Like, I'm not playing Kingdom Hearts. Okay, and maybe Rickon. He's kind of lame, too. And, okay, Yarn also kind of sucks. But... You know, I like most of the characters. And guess what? In Awakening, you know that thing I was talking about how I liked FE7 and FE84? Every character in Awakening is good. Everyone is viable. So you can just use your favorite. You get Seiri randomly in a chapter later on. You know, she's fighting off some pirates. You're like, oh, she's like a cute samurai girl. Just recruit her. You know, she'll join your team. You could use her. She's good. You know? You get sure she at some point. She's hot. Has a wyvern. You're like, wow. Oh, and he was her. Admittedly, sure she's a little bit slightly more cracked than your average character in that game, but you know what? She's good. Use her. Virion. You know? People would tell you Virion sucks. And okay, admittedly, like, if you compare him to, what, Donald? Actually, you know what? These days, people are saying Donald sucks. And those people are out of their freaking minds, dude. Like, is Donald the best unit in Awakening? No. No, Robin is, like, hands down, obviously. But Donald's great. Like, Donald's really good. Like... Just make him a hero, he gets soul, and he can solo half the game, like... You just have to give him... Literally, you have to give him, like, four or five levels, and then he's self-sufficient. It's really... He's that good. Like, people always talk about how, oh, you know, you have to give Donald EXP just so he could be almost as good as your other Awakening units. Because in Awakening, everyone has good growth rates. That's bullshit. Because Donald not only has good growth rates, he has... Mega ultra cracked growth rates. Like, what? He catches up fast and surpasses even faster. Unless your name is Robin or Morgan, then okay, I guess you don't have that luxury. Also, I think the most fun thing in Fire Emblem, in any Fire Emblem game, this also applies for FE4, and technically Fates. Planning out your build paths for your adult units to then give them to your child, like, give you stats, like, a portion of your stats, and growth rates, and classes, and... Like, not to mention the hair color thing, which is really cute too, haha. <laughs> and skills. Oh, bro, I totally forgot to talk about skills. Um, yeah, they added skills. Um, I want to say an FE8, but it was probably an FE9 because I have a bad memory, but whatever. Uh, skills are sick. Uh, moving on from that. The most fun you can have in Fire Emblem, in my opinion, is like leveling up a Crom, like a paladin Crom, getting Aegis, and then like marrying him to um, a Sully or something that maybe becomes a general. I don't, actually, I don't even know if Sully can become a general. Whatever, and then she gets Pavice, or maybe those are flipped. And then you hand down Aegis and Pavice to like Lucina. It's like, oh, this is sick. Or to Kiel, you know, who I guess this would be better on. Um, as a proof of concept but like it's it's so it's so much fun it's so much fun and then you max out the kid and then you like battle people online and then you battle their like spirits on spot pass 
All right, then, yeah, you go to, like, a convention, like Anime Expo, and you get all these people on Spot Pass, and you battle their teams with your crack teams. And sometimes they would have, like, Tiki on their team, or they'd have, like, Marth on their team, or Ulm on their team, or Celica. You know, they'd have these characters on their team because of this feature they had in Awakening where you could battle old Fire Emblem characters and then recruit them. Granted, they wouldn't be able to have, like, support conversations or anything, but they had their own unique growth rates. You know, their classes were mostly the same, but you could get a couple more mana keats that way because there were only uh, three in the game otherwise. I guess three is kind of a lot if you compare it to Pan and Yarn, which is two. I mean, I guess that's not actually a significant number. And I guess if you marry Noe, there's four mana keats in the game. Never mind, doesn't matter. Uh... That's not what I'm trying to get at. What I'm trying to get at is that it's fun and cool and I love it. And I love the supports in Awakening are amazing. I love like every, pretty much every single support. All right. Like even the guys who are Robin sexuals like Wallheart or Aversa or whatever. I even like those supports like. Also, like, Priam's a cool character, and his map is, like, cracked. It, there's, like, a lot of difficulty in Awakening 2 if you want there to be. There's a ton of DLC that, in my opinion, is pretty fun. But also, it's kind of annoying because you don't want to have to buy all of it. And, you know, this is, like, the first Fire Emblem game... Uh, yes, the first Fire Emblem game with, like, paid DLC added onto it. I was thinking about it, and that's almost certainly true. Uh, but yeah, I don't know, like, I, I, I just love this game. And the map design, unfortunately, like, alright, people talk all the time about Fire Emblem remakes. And I think, honest to God, if Awakening had Fates' pair-up system... And they made, like, the Mila tree and a couple of other maps, like, actually good. Because Awakening has a few good maps. Like, don't get me wrong. They, not all the maps are bad. But some of them are just really not good. Like, Chapter 2, like, the Burning Forest, that map sucks. It sucks so bad. And on Lunatic, it sucks even worse. Because you have to, like, solo it with Frederick, but you can't because there's one guy with a hammer. It's like, oh, look, we have to use our entire team to kill the guy with the hammer. And then, like, your Robin's underleveled, and, uh it's just a mess. Ugh. Ugh. Not to mention ambush spawns. Ugh. Ambush spawns. Ugh. But... I think when Awakening's good, it's really good. I think when Awakening's at its best, it's the best Fire Emblem ever is. Granted, when it's at its worst, it's pretty shit, but... Whatever. It has sick music, and I love the accordion, so it's the best one. Uh, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Um, it just feels so complete. Like... There's just so much content. There's so much content. There's a million paralogs. You know, you can grind as well if you want to. Uh, like, you get Noe. You get Pan. So, um, which, you know, you get a Mana Keat unit and a Beast unit. Which, you know, makes a return from Radiant Dawn, Path of Radiance. You get Beast units. That's kind of neat. Uh, they work differently, though... Use a B stone now instead. I mean, I guess he kind of used Lagu stones, sorta, but it's look, it's not the same, and you know it's not the same. All right, you've played both the games. If you're watching this, you're only looking for affirmation. You know what I'm talking about. It would be nice if Pan worked differently than Noe, but whatever. It is what it is. Also, one thing they would need to do if they remade Awakening, even though I like it. They gotta remove the second seal thing. Like, it's so broken. They fix it in, um, Fates. B 
because you know they realize that it's broken but oh i love awakening so much i love it so much ah uh, anyway okay enough gushing about awakening i'm moving on if you, if you want me to like talk more about it hit me up homies um i guess i'll rate all three of the fates differently because why not birthright um this game it's kind of easy. The maps are pretty good. To be fair, if you play Birthright on Lunatic, and you choose not to grind much, it's pretty hard. It's not super hard, but it's pretty hard. And it's fun. It's fun. A lot of the maps are pretty good as well. Some of them are kind of gimmicky and bad. Um, the cast is alright. Takami's cracked, Ryoma's like mega cracked, um, I mean Felicia and Jacob are great, but you get them every run, uh, you know, Birthright's pretty good, although if I have to be honest, uh, I don't know, people usually say Birthright has the strongest story of the three, but all three of the stories suck. I mean, like, let's not kid ourselves. They they do. All three of the stories are terrible. Alright, I didn't mention this with Awakening. But I like Awakening Story. Wow, a lot of people say that it's not that good. I think it's great. You can't tell I'm biased. Um, but Fates' story... Also, just so you don't think I'm a hater, alright? I played through all three Fates games in like five times each, okay? This game is incredibly replayable. I did the same stuff with Awakening. I grinded up every character, got them their perfect skills, did the heart seal shit, like leveled up Lilith to max. And that's why I actually probably have the most time and Revelation out of the three. And any of you who have played Revelation are probably crying for my soul right now. And hoping that, uh, you know, I, I, li I live a better life from here on out. But, you know, here we are. Birthright's alright. I Honestly, I put Birthright right under FE6. Birthright's fine. Um, Conquest. This game is sick. Story still sucks. Um... almost want to say the story in conquest is even worse than revs it is it's definitely worse than revs no because you're like i'm the bad guy but not really i'm just knocking them out i'm not really killing anyone we're gonna liberate nor from inside nor story's crap gameplay though in my opinion if we rated every Fire Emblem game just based on gameplay alone, just gameplay, Conquest is the best game. It's the best game in the series. Um, I think it's the best refined version of Fire Emblem gameplay that there is. I think it's great. Uh, it plays awesome. The parrot mechanic was super busted in Awakening. They fixed it in Fates. The map design in Conquest is pretty good it's pretty good um the characters in my opinion are a bit more likable than those in birthright but you know at the end of the day it comes down to personal preference i guess i don't know does not really the thing that i like to do the most which is grind like child units and give them perfect stats and uh perfect abilities and stuff you can't do it in conquest really trying to sort of can but it's not easy at all so. granted it wasn't necessarily that easy in fe4 you kind of had to know what you were doing you kind of had to know what you were doing in that game but i digress conquest is great it's fun all the maps okay almost all the maps are really fun uh the characters are nice the supports are nice the story is trash like Conquest and Awakening I like for opposite reasons, basically. But I still like them both. 
Um, like, if I just want to sit down and play a Fire Emblem game through, and I'm just like, I want to have fun playing Fire Emblem, like, because I like the grid-based, like, strategy combat thing. I'll probably play Conquest. And actually, this might be strange to hear, but my second choice for that? Probably FE6. Um, FE6 is kind of just like pure Fire Emblem. I think it's much less refined and much less good than Conquest, but it's there. Um, it's just a nice sit down and play video game game. Uh, Revelation. Alright. This is gonna be... Well, you know what? I think putting FE5 solo is probably a hot take for some people. So I think it might be a hot take for some people that I put Revelation at the top of A tier. Uh, this game sucks. This game sucks. And technically, technically, you can't use Scarlet in this one. So if you want to use Scarlet, gotta play Birthright. Heck yeah. But, and this is a big but, in this game, you can get pretty much every character, and you can optimize your children cross-faction, you know? Like, there are some classes you can only get in Hoshido and some classes you can only get in Nor. Which means there's abilities in either that you can only get in, you know, either. Not to mention, you can breed royals. Okay, now it sounds a little weird. But still, you can breed royals with each other and their children are turbo cracked. And then you can have like super like mega capped stats, like turbo like monsters of death. Like, uh, Takami's little child. Like, you marry him to Camilla. He's like a insane crackhead dude. Like he goes off on people. Like it's if you just press start through all the cutscenes, play on normal, like auto battle through the story. I know you're probably like, wow, this seems like a good game. Whatever. If you grind, then whenever you can, like grind up your characters, get their abilities, get their kids, bro. It's it's a blast. It's a blast. Not to mention, you get support conversations between characters you can't in other games, right? Because the Hoshin and Nor people don't usually talk to each other. But hey, you know, Takumi and Camilla, like I said before, can now S rank. What I'm trying to say, I like the part that I think is the most fun thing in all the Fire Emblem games is the best in Revelation. But. I can't put it in S tier because, like, you know, part of the game where you're supposed to, like, play the, a game and, like, listen to the story and whatever sucks really bad. Alright, so it can't go in S tier. And Awakenings, I think, is pretty decent, actually. And is almost as good as Revelation, if not better in some ways, in that, like, as far as uh, baby making goes. So, yeah, no, that's why it's, uh, that's why it's, it's where it is. Echoes. This game is awesome. If you have the DLC uh, characters from the card game, that's fun too, because they're kind of all broken, but, and you can, like, choose which army you get them on too so you can give them to your weaker army or whatever this game's great actually i love echoes but unfortunately i think it suffers from the same issue that genealogy does which is once you play through it once like don't get me wrong you can like change gray's class from playthrough to playthrough but that's it pretty much it's um once you beat the game once there's no reason to play it again it has probably the best story in fire emblem it's either echoes or 
genealogy, in my opinion, are the best stories in Fire Emblem, so, you know. If, uh, if that's a hot take to you, then, um, maybe you should just get, get used to hotter things? I, I don't know, like, I, I don't know why that could possibly be a hot take, so I'm just gonna leave it at that. Uh, Echoes is great. The art style's great, the voice acting's fantastic, the presentation's ghoul, ghoul? It's cool. The, f like, the combat's actually really fun in Echoes. Um, it's pretty unique. It's not like the super refined Fire Emblem gameplay of, like, FE6 or Conquest, but it's fun. You know, you get, s you actually, like, have a team of one of every class, pretty much, because everyone kind of has, like, their own unique thing. Not to mention, like, even characters with the same class. Like, let's say Tatiana and Jenny, for example. They have their own unique spell lists. And, um... They both get a summon, but they summon different things. It's really interesting and really fun. It's really fun. Like, I gotta be honest, like, Echoes is great. Uh, it, but it's unfortunately one of those games that once you play... You don't have a reason to do it again, you know? Like... With the DLC, you can get to, like, level 40 capped tier 3 classes, which is awesome. It's really cool. It's one of those things I love doing in Fire Emblem. Is just capping your classes. And, like, a mega, like, turbo Dreadfighter Grey at, like, level 60 or whatever was sick. And then fighting, spoilers, Grima at the end of the dungeon at the end. Oh, that was awesome. I loved that. I loved that, like, Labyrinth at the end. A lot of people don't. Um, I mean, they they like different things than I do. Things they want in their Fire Emblem games are different than what I want, I guess. You know, it's weird. The more I talk about FE6, the more I like it more than FE7. <laughs> and I was going to put FE7 in A tier. That's crazy. Sorry, I was just checking to see if, like, I liked my birthright placement. I think I, think I do. Um, actually, you know what? I'd rather play FE5 than Shadow Dragon. Shadow Dragon is just boring. FE5, like, kind of sucks, but at least it's, like, f fun in a way. <laughs> you know, you kind of have fun in a bad game instead of, like, you're bored in a bad game. Anyway, uh, going back to... Where the hell was I? Echoes, right. Story's great. Um, the class thing with villagers, pretty good. Uh, there's only one dancer in the game and it's Faye and she gets her dance at like level 18 in her promoted class. It's kind of dumb. Although the solo Pegasus Knight uh, triangle attack chick is sick. Not to mention using Palacatria and um, Est is fun as well. Bro, I just... I, I like Echoes a lot. Actually, I say it's not good for replayability, but it's been so long since I played it, maybe I'd be willing to play it again. So, you know what? If you want an Echoes playthrough, let me know. I guess if you want to play through of any of these, I'll do it. Unless you uh, tell me to play FE3 or 12, then I will say no. Oh, or Gaiden... I don't want to play Gaiden. I know I didn't put it in D tier, but come on. Three houses. Alright. This one might be a hot take. So, three houses. Um, I was really excited for this game. I saw the monastery exploration thing, and I was like, that looks so cool. Oh my gosh, there's going to be like an open area, like exploration element where you can like actually interact with your characters. It's going to be so awesome. Then I saw fishing and I was like, yo, you can fish in this game. That's awesome. And I am not going back on how I feel about it. I am not going to go, oh, actually I was wrong. Uh, those things were actually not cool and they shouldn't be in Fire Emblem because I think that's dumb. Uh, I think they should be, 
and I just think they were implemented badly in Three Houses. Um, every time you go back to the monastery, not, it's not really anything to do. The fishing minigame sucks. The plants suck. Um, talking to your students mostly sucks. Eating lunch with them sucks. It's just... It could have been in implemented better. And the area is not even that big. Like, Eric Mach is kind of big, but... It being big doesn't mean anything if there's not, like, a bunch of fun stuff to do in it. And eventually they did add petting dogs. Which, uh... Helped the game a lot. Kind of. Oh. Oh, ha, ha. Alright. So... I played my first route of this game, Golden Deer. This was before any of the DLC came out. This was like day one I played this. Uh, first playthrough was Golden Deer. I binged the hell out of this game until I beat it. I was like, this game is phenomenal. It's so cool. It's so good. It's so fun. Um, And then... I played the, is it Black Eagles or Crimson Eagles? I don't remember, but I did the Edelgard route, second. And I did it with New Game Plus, I think? So I was able to, all I know is that in that playthrough, I recruited every single kid in Garrick Mock. I recruited all of them. Um, I couldn't use all of them, obviously, but I recruited all of them. And, um... It was not good. And everyone who's played the Edelgard route will tell you that it wasn't good. But it wasn't good. But it was like so not good that even though I've been told go back and do blue lions go back and do blue lions like it's so good it's the best route like you don't have to do church route but you should do blue lions I can't I can't I somehow I just don't think three houses is fun anymore um I partially blame the DLC, to be fair, but I'll get to that after I talk about the first issue, the biggest issue I have with Three Houses, and that's the classes. The, like, main gimmick of Three Houses is you're a teacher, and you teach your units how to be a certain class. Um, one of the classes is Bandit, so um, that's strange, but... Aside from that, you can teach every single, like, some students are better at things than others, so they'll learn things faster or slower, but at the end of the day, it doesn't actually matter. Like, okay, it kind of matters if you want to get, like, S ranks or third tiers, but... There's a solved meta. And you might say, just, uh, don't do the solved meta then if you think it's boring. And there's a difference, right? The reason I think Revelation and Awakening are so fun is because I could have a Lucina, right? I could have a great Lord Lucina with Aether and, um, I don't know, what, what's that sick Ignis and Ignis, right? Because I just married female Robin the Crump, right? Which most people do. Or, I could have a Falcon Knight Lucina, you know? With, like, uh, Darting Blow and um, Pavice or something. Because uh, I changed Krom into a different class and I uh, married him to Sumia, who I didn't make a Dark Flyer because I'm stupid. That's fun. Because you can make sick strong builds 
in games like Awakening and Revelation. And it doesn't feel like a waste of your time or effort, you know? In Three Houses, it feels like, oh man, I just want to max out this class so I can get attack plus four, and then I want to max out this class so I can get vantage, and then every single per person on my team is a wyvern rider. Because you can just do it. Like, there's no thought, there's no planning, there's no difficulty, there's nothing stopping you from just going, my whole team are wyvern riders now. Except for the fact that you're like, well, actually, one of my team members is a dancer and the other one is a troubadour, so uh, get wrecked. Actually, I don't think troubadours can heal in this game. So I guess the flyer healer instead. Big whoop, whatever. It's even stronger. Um, yeah, anyway, so once you get to the point past your first playthrough, once you realize that you could just max out your weapon rank, you could just uh, auto level to 20 in New Game Plus, you could just like have unlimited uses on all your relic weapons, and all your units can just be cracked wyvern riders with bows. Your whole team is essentially just wyvern riders with bows. That's, that's the game. Um, it's not fun. It's not fun. It doesn't matter how good the story is at that point, because you're just not having fun playing the game. Like, essentially, all you want to do is hit auto-battle until the next cutscene plays. And I think... For me... What made me, like, come to this thought... Is that, um... The DLC maps are so bad and you can't even like in awakening a lot of the maps okay i say a lot of the maps but some of the maps are terrible but you can circumvent it by grinding or you know even if you're not grinding you could just field your best units you know you could have a team comp that you're comfortable with you know you could have uh, weapons that you got earlier in the game to help you combat certain things. Like, there's strategy. In the DLC, you're like... You have preset units with preset, like, items and preset abilities. And all the maps are bad. They're all bad. Every single map is bad. Ugh... Oh, I don't even want to think about Cindered Shadows, man. It's so bad. It's so bad. But the upside is that you get DLC characters. And the DLC characters are kind of quirky, though. And you unlock a new classes. And the classes are actually really fun and should have been in the base game. Because God knows the base game actually needed more classes other than Wyvern Rider, but... Oh, it doesn't matter anyway, because even if you do it, right, no one's going to be the cleric punch class, right? Like, you're still going to be a wyvern rider with a bow, and you're still just going to have your healer flyer. Like, it, it is what it is. Although, I guess, technically, dark flyer was added, and you could be that now, too. So, that's another fun meta class, but... Ugh, it's just... It sucks. It sucks. It sucks. And not to mention... Uh... Big enemies. Big enemies are a new mechanic. They added three houses. Oof. Now there's enemies that are four spaces wide. Oh, also they removed... They didn't remove pair up. Did they? I don't remember, actually. I, I feel like they removed pair up... Kind of. You fight next to each other, I think they're still pair up, but I don't think you can, like, hide inside of people anymore. I could be wrong, though. Uh, I remember they changed something like that. But, anyway, essentially you break uh, the big guys by using battalions on them, and then you hit multiple squares at once, and then you stun them, and then 
use your entire army to break these guys, but then it turns into like, oh, entire maps are designed around these fighting these giant guys, and then there's like four enemies on the map and just giant guys, and the giant guys aren't fun to fight. You just AoE your whole team, and then you have to heal everyone. They just have a million health. Ugh. Not to mention, a lot of the relics are busted. And it makes it to where characters that don't have them are just worse, so there's no reason to use them. And it's easy to say, well, you can't get all of those units, but you can. You really, you can literally get every unit pretty much on every run. Other than, like, the Lords and Hubert. And, um... Doo-doo. Doo-doo. I, I don't know. I just don't have fun with three houses. Um, I will say, though, just based on the plot of only Golden Deer, it's probably the third best story in Fire Emblem. They actually kind of cared about story in this game, and I was surprised. Because after Fates, I was like, maybe they don't give a shit about story anymore. Um, no. No, the story in Three Houses is great. Um, I think they tried to do the thing with Fates and Awakening where all the characters, like, have, like, a personality quirk or whatever, but with the story they try to tell with Three Houses, it's just, I feel like a lot of the characters just don't land. Like, I love Vike. I love Virion. Like, I love... Gaius, right? Like, all of these are, like, kind of meme one-note characters. I don't love Bernadetta. You know? Like, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I can't tell you exactly why I feel this way. I can't. Even someone who went to school and studied game design... Because I like to throw my money in the toilet and I was like, hey, let's get a game design degree. So you can work on World of Warcraft. Guess what happened? As soon as I got my degree, literally uh, the BlizzCon where they announced Diablo Immortal and then all the Hong Kong stuff happened. Yeah, that was when. So. Woo. Uh, anyway. Long story short, I don't have fun playing Three Houses. The story's pretty good, and maybe, for some people, it's good. I think they needed to spend a lot more time on Garrig Mock than they did. They needed to flesh it out and make it worth playing. Not just a place you walk around and hit A on stuff, you know? Like, they could have made the fishing minigame more involved, right? Like, they could have made the sauna thing, like, something that mattered. Like, maybe the the library, right? There's a library. What if they added, like, more lore books, you know, to the library? Or, like, maybe with illustrations in them or something? I don't know. They could have done something with three houses. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I just know that I personally don't love playing it. I don't think building characters in Three Houses is fun. I think building characters in Sacred Stones. I think building characters in Genealogy of the Holy War. I think building characters in Echoes is more fun than building characters in Three Houses, okay? So, it is, it is what it is. I think, at the end of the day, with too much freedom, it just becomes meaningless. Yes. So, uh, with all that said, I don't even hate this game. I'm actually gonna keep it exactly where it is on the tier list, though. Um, I legitimately think I like every game in front of it more. So, uh, there you go. Am I done with my Fire Emblem tier list? No. 
Now that I've moved Birthright, I think all is right. Oh, well. Alright, I gotta move Gaiden down. Like, <laughs> I have, the Gaiden Respector has logged off. Honestly... I'm not moving FE6 up. Nope, it's not happening. I was thinking about it, and I know you thought I was thinking about it. I didn't do it. Anyway, so... Anyone who stayed till the end, I guess this is the end. Let me know what you think about how I think about Fire Emblem. See you guys next time.